Slash is here with us yeah. in the studio this morning here at Q1043. Welcome. Mr. Hudson, sir, welcome. Good morning. It's so nice to have you here. You're an author. You did a big uh, appearance at Barnes & Noble last night in the Village. Yes, I did. And how did that go? Uh, it was, You know, it was really smooth. It's very different, different kind of atmosphere in a bookstore. You know, people coming in, and they're not your typical concert-going fans that you're used to. It's a different kind of a feel. Some girl walked up to me and said, to, uh, she came up and she goes, you know, this is way too conservative for you. <laughs> and I couldn't really respond. I was like, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I got a book out. I got to do what I got to do. Well, it's a situation where uh, there's there's a, an audience. They have a real nice setup there. Yeah. And they ask you questions. Yeah. With, well, no, no, they don't ask you questions. It was like a machine last night. Oh, you it was just a get machine. up there and you, you run through this sort of uh, assembly line. Of okay, so it was a signing. It was yeah, a signing yeah. as opposed to a reading and then a now, Q&A. Somewhere, someone told me that, that I'm, I, I was uh, expected to do a reading somewhere, and I said, not that I know. <laughs> Jen, do you know anything about that? Well, do you, well, you wouldn't have to read. You could just recite from memory, couldn't you? Um, because yeah, you apparently have an extraordinarily good memory considering what you say your mental state was yeah, during. Yeah, who would have Thought, right? Many periods of your life. <laughs> um, when we first, you know, started to hunker down and, and do this thing, um, it was it was structured. So I knew I was doing it from point A to point C. And as I started to come up with the major events that happened, that I, I I do remember, you know, that anybody would remember. You started yeah, to, anybody you, would a, sort of a torrent of memories started coming. And as, once that rhythm happened, then it really started to come back. And I think I actually. Uh, my my involvement with you know writing some of the more personal stuff all came at the very end when we were up against the deadline. Mm -hmm. And actually, since the book's been finished, a lot of stuff has come back to me that's not in there. Well, you need to have material for a sequel. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really planned on doing a sequel. So. Well, but your publisher has. Yeah, so right. you have to understand <laughs> that that's the way that it works. It's the same thing with an album. Yeah. You know, they always they always want that. At least that one. That sophomore album, which is scary. It's scary for recording artists, so the sequel is probably scary for authors as well. Yeah. Uh, now, you uh, are the uh, uh, child of an American mother and a British father. Two passports for you? Uh, I have, yeah, two passports. Yes. Dual yeah. citizenship. Dual cool. citizenship. Yeah. United States citizen and a subject of Her Majesty. You know, I found out my, I, uh, my green card expired at some point in the beginning of the Guns N' Roses days. And uh, what had happened is I we had to go to London for the first time, and I'd lost my green card right beforehand. So from that point on, I had to get my citizenship together. But you were born of an American. I what? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't. There's some no, kind I, of. I, I, I was actually I born about. in England. So mm -hmm. okay, you're a, you're a, you're a big star. You're a very well known person. Uh, you have an opportunity at times mm -hmm. uh, that most people don't to actually meet some of your heroes, the people you I. I, you know, that, that you idolized when you were a kid. Uh -huh. How do they react to you when you turn into Mr. Fan and go up and drool all over? I know, I get all star. <laughs> I do, I get starstruck. Um, With who? Anybody. I just see somebody on a commercial that I recognize. You know, just somebody, anybody on the street. I go, hey, I recognize him from there, and I'm sort of flabbergasted. Um, that's just some sort of a kid like thing with me. But with guitar players or musicians, people that I'm, you know, influenced by and I, I regard highly. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I don't know what the best way to put it is. I just sort of, hey, you know, I try to be as cordial as possible and, and, and try not to ask too many questions. Uh, now, your musical tastes are, of course, extraordinary, extraordinarily eclectic. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're not limited by one particular genre. No, you like no, no. lots of different kinds of music, and you have many, many artists that are among your favorites. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were to put together a list of favorites, I mean... Uh, Joni Mitchell would be on there yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, right. Some hard... There's a, there's a lot of stuff. Minnie Rupert would be on there, and nobody would expect that. But there's a certain there's a certain spirit that all of, that's that's a, sort of a vein that runs through all of it. It's got a certain kind of uh, expressive thing to it that I think is, it, with all the different types of music, it has that one similarity. Yeah. All right, now uh, we're going to take a short break, then uh, we're going to come back, and I have, to, I have to ask you a few little quick rock and roll star debauchery questions, okay? Okay. <laughs> That'll be all right. Okay, Slash is with us here at Q1043. Brand new book, um, which is called Slash. Great title. <laughs> And uh, happy Halloween, by the way. Yes, this is a good time to be here. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like it's good to be out promoting a book right on, you know, right at Halloween. Okay, a lot of guys. Let's face it, a lot of guys have fantasies. They would like to become big, famous, rich rock stars because then they could get lots of women interested in them, more access to women. Right. And then they'd be able to do things like, you know, crash with three or four naked strippers at a time that give them money. 
on top of everything else. Like right. here's some of my tip money, you know. That's that, how it works. That's what people that's what people dream about. But you were already doing that before you were famous. Well, that was how it worked. I mean, now, but I want to find you now. Just wait. <laughs> he wants to know you're, how. Miss, you're missing the point. How? When you were crashing uh-huh. with a whole series of good-looking strippers, mm-hmm. so one night you'd be in West Hollywood at uh, one woman's so house, and house, next right. night you'd be oh, well, you had a nickname for her. Yeah. Um, it had something to do with crabs. Crabian. Yeah, <laughs> and and then the next night you'd be staying with what three or four of them that shared an apartment. Right. And then uh, when you wanted to go buy, I don't know, some substance for your recreational use, they go pick up the tip money. Yeah, pick up the it, tip yeah. money at the strip Which club. Which was really convenient for them. But yeah. you were not a rock star yet. No. But he looked like one. Tell me how this is done. <laughs> um, Tell all of your fellow guys. Well, you know, it's just one of those things that happen. I think there's a certain kinship between strippers and musicians, you know, uh, the, what they do is is around music, and they sort of have this free, happy-go-lucky kind of, uh, you know, live by the seat of your pants lifestyle, and that's sort of similar to what we do. Yeah. Um, but why go th- it, why go through all the trouble of producing if you already have the end result? Well, because it's really about the music. Come on, <laughs> I know. I'm just. I mean, you're really it's inspiring. Just, it, it, there's to, a fascinating part of the book even, there. Even even if uh, you know you hang out with the stripper girls and and um, they're very very supportive and all that nice stuff. I think they would actually get a little sick and tired of you if you didn't move on at some point. <laughs> and now, of course, uh, we're talking about marital bliss. Even though you know there's kind of an odd story behind that too, but it's obvious. That there's marital bliss going on. I have a great marriage, so yeah. I but mean, it's, she's a very unique girl. Never, know? ever, I think, in the history of publishing, mm-hmm. has anybody ever produced a hardcover book from a major publishing house that includes a photo of a man's wife kissing his naked butt. No, no, <laughs> it's not Ron Jeremy's book. No. <laughs> That's never happened that was, before. Well, that was a, we threw a bunch of candid shots in there. So. <laughs> and uh, I, I have an, another question. This is a music question that may, I don't know, it may be stupid, but uh, I, because I hear two different things. <clears throat> Sweet Child of Mine, of course, one of the biggest, most fabulous. Right. Was the song that took us over the top. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the song that actually was a number one single right. from a number one album. Uh, I picked up a book and I read that Axl Rose wrote that for his girlfriend Erin. Uh-huh. I've also heard that that song is basically yours. That that's it's, your it's, composition. It was just the, uh, from a musical point of view. It's you know that riff is what inspired it. That sort of intro riff and turned into a whole song. But it was really as a song. It was something that was written by the whole band. You know, so I don't want to take all the credit for that. You know, but it was it was uh, it actually a song that when we first did it. Um, Guns N' Roses was a hardcore rock and roll band, and that was like the first sort of sappy ballad we ever did. And I say sappy because, all things considered, it, it is. And know? those tend to be the biggest hits. And and so I I used to I used to love that, that song. <laughs> you know, I used to when we'd play it in the set, I go, oh, you know, we were doing so well, and now we got to slow the whole thing down. But uh, you know, and I like playing the solo section, and the the actual riff itself was sort of hard to play, and I. Just if I was really sort of drunk or something. Like that. <laughs> you wouldn't and be I, drunk when you were was, working. There, there was would a you? couple nights I remember actually here at the limelight one time where I had to start it like four times. But uh, you know, it did. It, it's something that really has grown on me over the years. And your health is good. The things are going yeah, well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, you had that big operation when you were 35. Yeah. sticking that thing in your heart that had to be scary. That was that was that was supposed to be a good wake up call. I think you know. And it, it was. It, it didn't really straighten me out totally, but it gave me a sort of warning. You know. But life is good. Things are going well with, uh, every, with the band great the band's great um you know this is all interesting to be doing you know promoting something mm-hmm. i've never done before and the did, guitar hero thing which is cool and did uh, elizabeth taylor actually really see you naked from the waist down yeah that's <laughs> she really did. No, you can't make that shit up okay yeah. all right <laughs> <laughs> so you signed the uh, actual guitar body for our guitar here's pictures not on the, i like it when his pictures it's right, right, over there. right on right 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 on the front. Here it's it is. It's Guitar Hero, Hero 3, three. Legends of Rock. There's a picture of Slash. Yep. We've got this sign, and we're giving it away. Yes, we are. Yeah. Just keep it here on the queue, and we'll tell you how you can win. And I know you've got to be off to the next stop. A pleasure having you here yeah, with it's us. it's actually really, really nice talking to you. It's really great. Nice <laughs> to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you.